welcome back. Good to see you all again. Today, I'm so excited today. We have some delicious fish. And I was looking last night thinking, what can I prepare today for our next meal? And I thought, codfish. But first, welcome back to our show. Uh, the show, which still hasn't got a name, we're gonna call it the super fantastic, most passionate cooking show on the internet. And with me, of course, as always, is my camera person, Stella. Hello. There she is. And we're gonna get stuck right into this today. We're gonna get right into it. All right, well, downstairs I looked in, I found this wonderful codfish that we had that was downstairs. This is a codfish I caught in the summertime during the food fishery, and I keep it vacuum packed and we have it ready to go. So I've got a couple cod fillets, and I thought, what's something cool and different we could do with cod? Rather than having this silly, uh, sort of, uh, not silly I should say, but it's quite delicious, but the uh, sort of average pan-fried cod as we often cooked. Well, I thought something more exotic. So I found some, some Thai curry paste in my fridge. And I got the dregs of some herbs and spices. And I'm gonna to throw together for you a coconut curry, delicious Thai curry codfish today. Now, to get going first, you know, wash our hands before we do anything else. As always, we wanna make sure we wash our hands before we start any cooking. Get it nice and clean, moving right on. Grab myself a clue, nice clean cloth. And now we're ready to go. So this recipe is gonna be pretty involved. We have a list of wonderful ingredients that we need to show you today. We're gonna to start off with, of course, we already introduced the codfish, but we're gonna have some coconut oil here today. We have some onion, some garlic, and of course some ginger. We have our Thai curry paste, a special ingredient. This is dried lime leaves. You can find this actually at the Herb and Spice shop down on Jower Street called Food for Thought. They carry this. This is a beautiful, also the Chinese markets do, do as well. We have, of course, coconut milk, delicious coconut. Our codfish, of course. Some fish sauce. This is a special bottle of fish sauce that, that was given to me by my friend and colleague, Roger Andrews. And he got it from Vietnam for me and it's delicious. I also got some brown sugar in this canister. And over here, we have some green red pepper, salt, and of course pepper, and a selection of herbs. I have here some green onion, and I found deep in the recesses of my fridge some cilantro. And by God, it's still green and still ready to eat. I had to pick through it though, so we managed to find it. We are, of course, in quarantine, well, not in quarantine, but we are in lockdown and we can't get up to the store like we, we, like we would like to. And I also got some beautiful fresh garlic, uh, sorry, fresh basil. This is basil. Delicious and wonderful. It's growing. I've been hacking at this plant for well over a year and it keeps growing back. You can't kill these things. So let's let it grow again. So we're gonna use some of that beautiful fresh basil as well. All right, to start off with, we're gonna go ahead and get going on some rice. Now rice takes a little long time to cook and it holds really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that first. To start our rice, we're gonna grab some basmati rice. So I have here a canister that I like using of delicious basmati rice. We're gonna go with one cup of rice, just like so, a nice even cup. I shake it off to level it, and that way you have a rice and level. And we're gonna go ahead and put in one cup of rice, but we're gonna use two parts water. So I'm gonna go over to the sink and use the same measure. I measured the rice in. Can you see me over here? And one. And two cups of rice, a little extra, not much, but a tablespoon extra just for evaporation. We're gonna then add a pinch of salt to that rice pot, just like that. We're gonna put the cover on this and we're gonna set this going over on the stove, as you can see right here. My trusty camera person's coming right over. And then we're gonna turn this on to a nice, nice medium high heat, there we go. And then we're gonna let that cook and slowly simmer. It'll take between 20 and 30 minutes for that to cook. Now that we have the rice on, we're gonna go ahead and put this away. We're gonna start on our actual prep work for our delicious curry. So first things first, we're gonna get some, some, uh, some cool 
thing is going. First things, we're gonna cut up our onion and our ginger and our garlic to get us going first. So we're gonna use our knife today. Give our knife a quick steal. Make sure it's nice and honed. Put this back. Keep that out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and take off the root ball right here at the end of the, of the onion. And then we're gonna take off the top of the onion as well, just like that. The peel, we're gonna throw it into a little canister. Use that measuring cup I was using earlier to throw my compost in. We have a composter outside and we fill it up with all our leftover trim and put it into our garden. And now we have a garden. We're gonna go ahead and peel the garlic by making a slight cut right through it, just like so, in half. And now we're gonna go ahead and peel off the old skin that's not edible. And that's it. Now the garlic is ready for chopping. That's onion. Sorry, onion. Thank you, thank you, Cam. That's, that's not garlic. <laughs> you are very true, it is not garlic. <laughs> I see you play this game before. This is not garlic, it is an onion. We're gonna dice this onion up super small. because We want to have this onion sort of disintegrate into the sauce that we're gonna make for the, for, the, uh, for the wonderful curry dish that we're gonna do. So we're gonna cut it across the top like this, like kind of like a deck of cards, as you can see, and then slice down through the top, just like so. And now we have that done, we're going to go ahead and cut this super fine and quickly. When you're working at this at home, I cut, I've been cooking for nearly 20 years now. So don't get intimidated by how fast I cut things up. You just practice, you get good at it too. Just watch your fingers. There we go. Nice and cut, super fine. So a fine, fine, super fine dice on this onion. Beautiful. If you find the onion bothers your eyes, um, use cold onions will help. A really sharp knife helps as well. Mine is like a razor. Uh, also goggles. It's actually the, the, the fumes hitting your eyes is what causes the, the issue with uh, people having their eyes uh, get watery when they're cooking with onion. All right, so we have our onion cut up now. We're gonna go ahead and get the other couple ingredients ready to go that we need, which is some beautiful ginger. I love ginger. Ginger is one of those beautiful aromatic root fruits that is in a lot of the South Asian cuisine that we eat. And we also have garlic, it's sort of like the trinity we have here. Onion, garlic, and um, uh, uh, ginger, which wonderful combinations that make it wonderful. Uh, to get garlic out of the skins really quickly, you take the skin of the garlic, the garlic, and just give it a quick crush, just like so, like that. And now you're able to peel the garlic super, super quick. As you can see, beautiful. We're gonna get probably three cloves of garlic today. For the amount of fish that I have there, I think three cloves might be able to do the job for us. I don't usually use recipes. I kind of eyeball things and use technique a lot. And I, when you get working with me and keep watching these episodes, you're gonna pick up a lot of technique as well and learn how to, how to judge uh, how to cook um, and how to use technique to, to bring your recipes to, to life. I'm gonna go ahead and peel that ginger. I'm gonna grab myself a little carry knife and I'm gonna peel off the root ends like so and get the garlic, the, sorry, the ginger rather, really nice and peeled. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was in cooking school, I never used a lot of garlic before and, uh, or sorry, rather ginger before and I didn't know you had to peel it. So when I was, <laughs> In my very early days, I made a huge mistake and made this wonderful dish, but I didn't peel the garlic and got really scolded by my chef I was working for in school. Never forget now though, never forget. Here we go, we're almost there. Peel the last little pieces off, just like so. And there we go. So we have a lovely piece of peeled garlic. I'm gonna move those peels off. Clean my station as we go. Our rice now is boiling. I'm gonna turn down the heat to a medium low heat to keep it from boiling over. There we go. Back over to the ginger. So we have our garlic and ginger. We're almost ready to go to start adding these to cooking. We're gonna go and use a special tool for my tool rack to help us today. This is 
a rasp, or also known as a microplane. We're gonna use this to slice the ginger and garlic up to a fine paste. We're a grater? A, uh, basically a grater. It's also known as a rasp. We're gonna lay this on a ramekin, like so. And we're gonna take our ginger and our garlic, we use a close of garlic first, and we're gonna pass them over, I'll do it this way, the camera, over top. And it makes, basically, a very fine grater. And as you see, it really pulverizes the, the, ginger, the garlic and the ginger into a fine paste. So it makes it really fast and really cool. It's like little tiny knives grating that ginger down and turning that garlic down. We'll do the ginger next. And you see it just disintegrates. Look at that. I don't know about you, but this smells amazing already. Hey Stella, can you smell that ginger? Yes. Oh yeah. The rice is bubbling. The oh. bubbles are going over the... Um, Oh, that's not a problem. What we'll do is we'll turn the heat down even lower and we'll cover it up like so. And then you'll see that slowly dissipating as the temperature drops and uh, the rice will start cooking in the hot liquid. All right. It smells wonderful here already. I love the smell of ginger. The one thing we always want to do when we talk about the rice, we want to put our rice on early so that we can uh, allow it to cook. It takes about 20 minutes to cook rice, but it holds really well. So we can also leave it on and keep it in the pot and it'll stay nice and hot. So that way it doesn't, doesn't get spoiled. The fish in the curry though, doesn't really hold well. So we wanna cook this and serve it as soon as it's done. There we go. Getting the last bit of the garlic passed through. And last but not least, Last clove of garlic. Sometimes you end up with these little small pieces at the end you can't get through without rubbing your finger against it. We're just gonna give these guys a quick little choppy chop. Fine chop with our chef's knife. There we go, off the sides and in this side. All right, so now we have a finely chopped garlic and a finely chopped ginger. Look at that beautiful ginger on that rasp, beautiful. We're gonna use our paring knife now, just to sort of, as you can see, scoop it off, cutting it off the knife. There we go, the blade, the rasp, like so. All right, so now we have the base ingredients for our delicious curry base. So now we're gonna head over to the stove and we're gonna get our, our, pan, our pan ready to go. Move this over. Here we go. We have a nice, sturdy, heavy bottom casket uh, skillet here. We're going to go ahead and turn on the heat to a nice medium high setting. There we go. And you're going to feel the heat rising up from the pan. We're going to use some of our first ingredient, especially we use some coconut oil. Coconut oil is one of these wonderful ingredients that has a wonderful aroma and flavor to it. And as we're using a coconut-based dish, I can use butter or vegetable oil, but coconut oil sort of gives it that lovely character we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with a tablespoon of oil, like this. Coconut oil is a saturated fat. So that means, uh, like animal fat, it actually hardens at room temperature. But as you can see, it doesn't take very long to melt in this hot pan. Or really your fingers, actually. Yeah. Or, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you rub this in your finger, Stella, and it turns into yeah. like an oil. Very true. Coconut oil is used for a lot of like cosmetic and, and people have like, um, um, use it for a lot of um, uh, sore fingers or uh, yeah. things like that. Coconut oil, all right. Well, check that out. It's actually melting down quite nicely into this lovely, lovely oil. You want to have enough oil so that your whole pan is sort of coated with this delicious oil. It smells wonderful. The smell of coconut oil. It smells is, like popcorn. The reason why it smells like popcorn is because we cook, I, cook yeah. pop, I use coconut oil to cook popcorn. There we go. We're going to turn the heat down to a nice medium low heat and we're going to go ahead and add our ginger and our garlic mixture right into the pan. You know your pan is going to be hot enough when you hear that sound. That that's what you want to hear. Beautiful. We're going to start smelling some wonderful aromatic flavors. Next up, 
is our onion that we had diced up earlier. Good. Lay that in too as well. Our garlic, our onion, our ginger, our base aromatic vegetables are in that pan and are cooking. And they're gonna give us a wonderful aroma and smell. Oh, guys, I wish you could be here with us. That smells amazing, hey Solo? Yeah. We're gonna go ahead now and cook this down, not till it browns, so we're gonna reduce our heat down to low, just to get it glistening, translucent, almost like it's, ooh, almost like it's see-through. The oil is just going to slowly, slowly cook those onions down until they are almost into a paste themselves. God, that's so nice. So we're gonna let that slowly, slowly simmer. While we're letting that simmer, we're gonna get our second, our uh, second ingredient, because we're on our third or fourth ingredient now, our next ingredient, which is our coconut milk. We're gonna go ahead and open up our coconut milk can. We're gonna go ahead and open this up like so. How are we looking, camera person? Yep. Good? Yep. All right. Handy can opener. There we go. And actually, when you open a can, you're gonna see that it's also solid, but it's a liquid on the bottom is with it as well. So this is gonna be added to it. So take a look now, no browning, just a gorgeous, almost see-through color. And the aroma is amazing. We're gonna go ahead now and add in our coconut milk. Look at this coconut it looks like milk. coconut oil. It does, it's actually very similar. It's the meat of the coconut that's been passed down, but as it adds to the hot pan, you can see it almost instantly liquefies. And at the very bottom, there's actually some liquid as well. We're gonna add the whole can. This is gonna be our base liquid now that we're gonna be using for this today. Perfect. Now, I realized something just in as I was adding this coconut, I forgot to add a key ingredient. I usually add it the, 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 this part with the onions, which is the garlic, the uh, curly pet paste. So we're gonna have, add this to it as well and add it to simmer with it as well. So this is our curry paste. Uh, we're gonna use a fair bit of this. I really enjoy curry paste. So I wanna have a super, super amount in it because uh, it's a wonderful, rich flavor that we have. I'm gonna add this to the, to the recipe as well right here. But I kinda add the coconut milk a little too early. I like adding it to the frying onions and ginger. But of course, when we're filming things, you kinda lose track of where you are. And as I said, this is completely uncut. We're not gonna make, we make mistakes and I'll stay in. This is just how I cook on a, on a, uh, a Monday afternoon for supper. Oh yeah, that is great. You can already start seeing this. So we added about a tablespoon of curry paste to this. You can add more or less depending how strong you want your curry. The curry paste has a lot of ingredients into it, including lime, chili, and a bunch of different um, herbs and spices from Thailand. And this will give you this wonderful, um, delicious, um, exotic flavor that we're gonna add to this, uh, this recipe. All right. So now comes the long part we have to do which is now getting this reduced. Before we let this reduce though, we're gonna add another special ingredient, and this is kaffir lime leaves. Can you smell this, Stella? Doesn't that smell like, mm. like fruity? These are delicious. These are lime leaves. We're gonna put three lime leaves in this to simmer with this uh, curry uh, mixture we have right here. So we have our coconut milk and our onions and That's ginger fair. and garlic. That's not three, that's four. We, four, I stand corrected. <laughs> well, I do without you, Stella. <laughs> now, we're also gonna be adding some brown sugar. Brown sugar will help sweeten this and make it nice and delicious. We have about a, about a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. And probably the most important addition to this we're gonna be adding is our fish sauce. Now fish sauce is made literally by fermenting fish. It's, it's stinky. It does smell pretty bad, it? Doesn't smells it? like um, rotten fish, sort of. It does, but it doesn't taste like it. It, tastes it doesn't taste bad in, in, in like dishes though. So we're gonna put in about a tablespoon or more 
That um, comes out really thin. Yeah, and it doesn't come out very fast. Looks like a lot going in there, but actually that's a very thin stream, so it takes a while for it. But a tablespoon to two tablespoons. This is pretty much one of our salt substitutes as well. It gives you that unami flavor, the flavor of savoriness, and it's such important. Many, many, many dishes in this part of the world rely on this, this, this ingredient. Uh, fun fact too, ancient Rome, they used to have a, a variation that's called garum, which was pretty much similar to fish sauce. All right, hike the lid, top of the lid, it's got some more coconut milk on it. We'll just scrape that off as well, while we're here. So we're out of our, just about out of our jar. We might as well finish it. This isn't, this is not the first time I made this dish, as you can tell. And we're gonna mix this in as well. Making sure everything is delicious. All right. So now we actually have a lot of the work done already. This is a very super meal to put together. We're gonna go ahead now and wait a few moments to turn this heat down and we're going to do something called reduction. So we added all these aromatic flavors to this delicious dish and we're gonna get them reduced down. And by reducing, we're going to cause them to concentrate the flavors because we all know that water is the enemy of flavor. And with the water evaporating out, it's gonna concentrate the flavor here. But you keep in mind too, we're actually gonna be adding a bunch of fish to this and fish is full of water. So when we add the fish to it, it's gonna cause it to get soupy again. So we don't want that too soupy. So having it nice and reduced and tight before we add the fish, will bring it all nice and get together for us. All right, so we're gonna let this simmer and we'll make a quick cut right here. And when you come back, you'll see that we have already, uh, we'll be ready to add the fish to it. Back, and as you can see, 10 minutes of fish pass, and now you see that the coconut milk has gotten very thick. We're gonna go ahead now and turn this off. This is what you're looking for. I pull my, my spoon through it and it leaves a trail. Very, very thick. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. All right, we're gonna turn this completely off now, allow it to sit, and that's our base of our sauce there. Now we have to add the other ingredients to it. So let's go back over to the prep table. Our little oven that we have done up. All right, welcome back to over here, and we're gonna go ahead and cut up some peppers. Uh, thinly sliced peppers for the vegetable of this meal. We're gonna go ahead and slice down right through the center of it like so. So you have these two lovely halves like that. Then we're gonna peel off the little bit right here and add it to our compost bin. Getting all the seeds out, as you can see. Uh, you get this pepper a bit of a rinse. There's some dirt on the outside of the pepper. Rinse them already once, but some dirt got caught on the inside. No, it must be dirt. All right. So now that we have that done, we're going to slice our peppers super, super thin. Like so. Nice thin strips. Just like so. And get it super thin so that it takes not very long to cook. Because now we're gonna start working on the fish and prepping the fish up. Um, your battery's gonna run out soon. Is it? it? turned on the battery saver, but... Okay. Yeah, okay. Not a problem, we'll grab a cord. Oh, live photography. Beautiful peppers. Beautiful compost. And battery power, there we go. Beautiful sauce over there. All right, so now we have our next ingredient that we're gonna get going, which is our delicious codfish. We're gonna pop open the vacuum patch bags that I made earlier. We're gonna dump our fish into the bowl, pull the bags into the garbage. They're no longer usable after that. This is bought the pack during the summer and vacuum packed right away the height of freshness. So it's wonderful. I'm going to drain off any water that came out of it, and we're going to slice up our fish into more usable, manageable pieces. I have about two fillets here. So this is one fillet here. Each package had a fillet. Nice, little, lovely piece of fish this is. Thanks to my father-in-law, Ken Batten, to help me with the fish. We go out every summer and have a great time. Papa. Papa Brownhouse, as he's not around here. 
And there we go, our second piece of fish right here. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to throw our fish out right here. You can use two fillets of any style. We're going to cut them into little more bite-sized pieces to fit the pan better. I'm going to cut them right in half like so. So one, two, and of course three. This is a particularly big fish right here, so we'll cut this one in half again as well. So this is enough fish for five people, I think. The recipes are for about four people, a family of four like I have at home, with some leftovers. They always want leftovers. Beautiful. So our fish is now cut and we're ready to go for the next steps. Give my hands a quick wash, yet again, and, and we're gonna go ahead and turn our curry paste back on and get that going again. So come over right here again, and we see, turn on the heat, get this going. Be careful the cord. Get cooking just like so. Gonna bring over our fish, and we're going to lay our fish into this now thick coconut curry mixture. Get our spoon right there. And now this fish is going to re release all its delicious water, very flavorful water, into the curry and help thin it out again. So we don't need to add any water to it. It will actually ma make that nice and thin for us. We're going to go ahead and now stir it the curry paste over top of the beautiful pieces of fish fillet that we have. Oh, oh. it's... Uh, no biggie. The cord was wrapped around. Okay. There we go. Minor technical difficulties. Ah, shooting live. This Here is not go. live. Well, it will be. It very will few be. cuts. I'm not very good at video, I think, so. <laughs> no cuts. All right. So we're gonna turn the heat down to a nice medium low heat. We're gonna add a little seasoning of salt, a little bit of pepper to it as well. And now we're gonna add our fresh cut peppers right on top as well, all even over. And now we're gonna go ahead and cover this over and allow the simmer for the fish is cooked. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they tend to overcook their fish. And overcooking the fish is a cardinal sin. So this only needs now enough time for the fish to, to, to get opaque and nice and flaky. So we're going to cover that up like so. Moving now, we're going to change out our cutting board to a different cutting board. This one looks like a fish on it. I'm going to grab a new cutting board really quickly. Like so. Take our knife, give our knife a bit of a wash and clean. So we got a fish on this knife as well. We don't want to cross the pan, do we? There we go. Nice and clean. Grab my towel. And now we're going to wipe off the knife and the towel. Now we're going to cut up our garnishes, our beautiful garnishes. So we have here some cilantro. We're going to start with some cilantro. As I said, I salvaged this cilantro from the fridge. It was Nearly done, but I had a little bit that was still edible. I'm so happy because it's one of my favorite favorite herbs. Cilantro is one of these herbs that some people love, others hate. For me, it cannot be you cannot have it without uh, with Thai food. It's such a, a signature ingredient. Beautiful. The smell the fresh herb. It's wonderful. We've got our lovely green onions. We're going to slice these up as well. I'm just going to these a really rough chop, nothing, nothing fancy. Just sliced along like so. Nice and cut, nice and thinly. So you have a big pile of delicious green onions. Finally, one of the last things we're going to add to it is the precious, precious little brazel that we have over here. So this guy has been with us for a couple of years now, and well, not a couple of years, about a year old. And I've been harvesting leaves from it every once in a while, 
we're going to take one of his sprigs, like so. You can use store-bought cilantro too. Oh yeah, absolutely. We just have one, but we're going to call him on lockdown. So you can use store-bought or basil, and this is some baby basil here. I'm going to skim off the leaves like so, and we're going to get this a little, you know, some they're so small and so light, they just tiny little, tiny little cut, hardly anything. That is so aromatic. Oh, the smell of basil and herbs is absolutely gorgeous. Let's go over and take a look at our fish. I'm gonna see now that we have a lot of water and the fish is almost cooked already in that little bit of time. So the fish is coming quite along quite nicely. So it's releasing its water and thinning out the, the, the Reduced. This happens so often. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. So allow that to cook a little longer. And then we're ready to go. All right, we have our supper ready to go. So let's take a look at this beautiful, oh, the fish is cooked perfectly. Sauce is now lush, thin, thinned out by the delicious cooking fish. We have our peppers. Are right, this slightly cooked with a little bit of bite to them? We're now going to hit it with handfuls of green onion right on top, just like so. Don't worry about cooking the green onion. Green onion will cook in the hot liquid that's there. It doesn't take very long to cook. Our beautiful cilantro that we found, and a little bit of basil right on top. Uh, mix all that together into. A now we're gonna plate up our first plate. It's gonna be delicious. How about you, Stella? Would you like to eat this taster today? Yes, I would love to. All right. We're gonna grab a small plate. Our rice has been cooking over here for our supper tonight. Our beautiful rice is now fully cooked. We're gonna go ahead and grab a spoon. And fluff the rice up. Beautiful. Add a plate of a spoon of rice in the center of the plate, like so. Cover this up with the rest of the family. And then with our fish, we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a little spatula, I think might be helpful for this today. So a spatula. I'm gonna grab a beautiful piece of fish. Here we go, it's a nice one right here. Pick it up very carefully. It's very fragile. I'm laying the fish and the peppers right onto the plate like so. Beautiful. And to end it off with, grab a grab a tablespoon salt. Of salt. We're gonna go ahead and spoon some delicious, now thin, beautiful curry, coconut curry sauce right over top, just like so. I'm gonna clean our plate up a little bit. You don't have to do that, you can just slop it on the plate. But... You could, but... <laughs> but we are doing fancy. And then a little bit of that basil we cut earlier, right on top. And there we go, a delicious curry meal. And for you, Stella, tell me what it tastes like. See if it's any good. It's very hot, but coconut, and it's spicy, but not very spicy. And fish. Is it yummy? Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> so, so ends our, our impromptu curry fish, coconut curry, high curry. And uh, we hope to see you next time uh, for another culinary adventure.